We are approaching a watch change, so we may be quiet for a little bit as we pass it on to the four to eight watch. I think Argus has stopped. You're muted, I think. I think that puts me kind of here so that I can be on the on the wall. I'm going to change in the video chair. Good morning. We are doing watch change right now. Our watches last for four hours at a time, just to answer a question in the chat. So we have a, this is the 4 a.m. slash 4 to 8 a.m. slash 4 to 8 p.m. watch. That's signing on.
would love to. Um, let's have a look, see. Ship move. Yeah. Um, 075, does that sound good? 075, all right. It did get pretty steep. Um, do you want 20s? Sure. Okay. Start with that. Cool, cool. Hello everyone out there. We are in about the 16th hour of this dive. Um, we plan to go for about 24 hours, so it should last till approximately noon today. We are currently exploring unnamed seamount D. Uh, we started at approximately a depth of 3,543 meters. We're sitting around uh, 2,000 meters right now. Exploring up the flank of the seamount. Good morning. This is your watch lead, Megan Putz from the University of Hawaii. Uh, the plan right now is to collect a rock, and um, kind of interested in this little thing over here. So, when you guys are ready in the front row. Yeah, we're moving the ship, and uh, vehicles will move in a minute or two. Great. Uh, where did you want that rock? Here or on uh, another depth? Uh, here is great. They uh, couldn't get a rock uh, on the last watch, so... Challenge accepted. You want a rock right here? Wherever. Okay, what's okay. your target depth? Our target depth was uh, 2177, so... Ooh, uh-oh. It's fine, though. It's not that big of a deal. Hmm. These are going to be all glued, I think. Maybe this one under the sponge should be okay. Like this one? Like, yeah. This guy right here, lasers. Oh, yeah. That might be loose. This one might be loose. What about the one above it? I think they're all going to be glued. One above it? Maybe that one's too big. This one? Oh, yeah, that's not coming out. Yeah, it's glued. Okay, so maybe this one. Zoom in, please. Looks happy? Yeah, that looks good. Oh, okay, yeah, good. Can you switch the cameras around, please? And then bubble on, on the minute. You can leave the dive salvo, it's fine. Less of a pain. Okay, box out. 
You want this in Alpha or Bravo, probably? Can you get it in Echo? Echo, oh yeah, easy. You can stop there. You don't want it in a small box? Uh, they're all full. Well, they all have stuff in them. Okay. Fish. Yeah, so are you talking to me on SPL? Okay, one sec. Oops, excuse me, sponge. And then um, Niskin 2 is open. Niskin 2, you say? Yes. Okay. You can leave bubble there. Oops. You can leave bubble on the on the other side. Oh, also, uh, the previous sample was zero nine zero. Zero Come nine on, zero. Come on, grip lock, Roger. work. Why don't you work, button? What's happening? That was weird. Okay. Didn't work like four times in a row. Uh, sorry, what's our numbers? Oh, we Niskin only have two. two or one. Yeah, okay. That one was zero nine one. Uh, zero nine one, Roger. Okay. There's a little fish. And, uh, All right, ready to keep going? Yeah. Can you look at that yellow thing, or is it too late? What was the yellow thing? It, there was that yellow coral. We just flew. We can see that before I go. Yeah, this. Whoop. Hello, sponge. Okay, zoom in, please. We can get a ship move going. Okay. Bridge nav two zero meter zero seven five. Um, that's what I was trying to find out. Uh, it just looked a little different to me. Um, it could be a solandaria, which is a type of hydrozoan. Can I get a front porch, please? Thanks. Then I see an enemy and its branches. All right, uh, we can get, get a move on. Thanks. What's happening with this coral? Yeah, what is happening with that coral? It's the Corella de Ville coral. <laughs> half white, half yellow. See a bunch of snake snarks in that coral. Oh, wow. Okay. So, 
definitely the opposite of what I, I thought was going on here. The yellow part is the coral, um, and that's a plexorid coral. And then the white is a zoanthid, oh, so wow. parazoanthid that's grow overgrowing part of the this plexorid skeleton. So I thought the white was the real coral, and the yellow was the parazoanthid, but it's actually the opposite. So it tricked me. Nice. How can you tell which one's the real coral? Um, so the the parazoanthids um, are not octocorals. They have lots of tentacles. They look a little bit grainy. Um, and they overgrow coral skeletons. And then if you were looking at the base, the base of that coral um, was the yellow. And so that was the actual coral. Can you zoom on this guy, please? This is a nice fluffy Chrysogorgia. Now if you look closely, you might see a little squat lobster in the branches, but they hide pretty well. We usually see this squat lobster called Europtychus, always hanging out inside Chrysogorgia. Hmm. Yeah. It might be right here. It's hiding. It's almost the same color as the coral. I think I see oh, it. Yeah. I think I see a little arm there. That is hidden. Well, it does look like a comfy coral to hang out in. Oh, and it says a black coral. Yep. It's a little black coral right there. That yellowish brown one is a... Um, Oh man, why am I blinking? Well, so there was a bathopathies, and then there was a staropathies. The yellowish brown one is staropathies. I haven't quite woke up yet. <laughs> I think you're excused. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that makes seven of us. <laughs> I just had to count to make sure it was... <laughs> right, like, what time is it? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. There's a little hemicrine in that pink coral down the corner. we got a Calafacus uh, stalk sponge. And then this one is a Paragorgia. And it's got a Parazoanthid on it, too. But this Parazoanthid is yellow. So what is the relationship, again, between... The coral and the parazoanthid? Yeah, so the parazoanthid is an epizoic organism, meaning that it grows on top of the coral. Um, we're not exactly sure um, what kind of battle goes on for that parazoanthid to take over the coral. Um, was the coral damaged? Does it just um, settle on the coral host and then slowly take over? Or was the coral just not doing so well? And that's why it gets taken over by the zoanthid. Um, yeah, that, that's a little bit unknown, but we oftentimes see zoanthids overgrowing other corals. Aridogorgia? You are right. Mm. This is an aridogorgia, a spiraling firework coral. It's always very mesmerizing. This one's kind of a fun one to draw or try to draw. It's got so much. How would you ever? It's so hard. I can't draw a straight line, let alone this many straight lines. They're all straight. You'd be fine. <laughs> nice move, Trevor. Thanks. I feel like it would make a really nice wallpaper design. Oh, here's a tree to pleurus sponge. This is a really long one. So people have been calling this the leaf sponge. It's very leafy. And sometimes we see them in these sort of long uh, leaves. And then I've seen them grow in sort of fan-like shape. So we're not sure if those are two different species or the the 
morphology of the sponge changes depending on where it's living. So it's one of those questions that I've been having. Are these the same? Are they different? We're not sure. What's going on with this? There's, it looks like a dead sponge stock that has something on it. You can zoom there, please. All right. Okay. So these are zoanthids. So just like what we saw growing on the live coral, um, these zoanthids are growing on a dead sponge stock. We often see zoanthids in a colony. Um, they will share tissue between the polyps, sort of like a stoloniferous octocoral. But you can tell that these are not stoloniferins because they are not octocorals because they don't have eight tentacles. They have way more than eight tentacles. How many do they have? I can't count that high. I know, there's too many. Okay. Too many. Is, yeah, too many. More than eight. Less than a million. What's the what's the word that is more than eight? What? Legs? Tentacles? What'd you call it? Tent tentacles. 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 Cool. Overhang. Oh yeah. See, this is what I'm used to seeing when we see the Romilla Gorgia militaris. They're just like on these walls or in these sort of crevices growing in high densities. And so when we were seeing just like one solitary one, that was really interesting because uh, this is how I usually see them. Little mushroom coral? Yeah, a little mushroom coral. You got it. And then these sponges here and here are Faria near Oka erecta. All right, so I wanna, I'm going the wrong way, but I kind of want to go up this thing. So yeah, I we gotta, can go up. Those ones are pretty common. We'll see them. This thing doesn't stop. Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, it just keeps going. And I want to check out this big sponge. Big sponge. Oh, wow. That is a big sponge. That is a polyopicon sponge. My goodness. So this is a sponge in the family Pharanomatidae. It is very large. <laughs> <laughs> and fluffy looking. It is, yeah. These sponges, these polyopions grow in a lot of different sort of forms. Um, we've been giving them sort of names that uh, relate to their morphology uh, just so we can differentiate some of the ones that look unique. Um, that one has sort of just a really strange morphology, so we would just call it polyopigon. Makes me want to crump it because of the texture. Mm -hmm. Oh, comfort mm -hmm. sounds good. Oh. It's pre-breakfast. Would yeah. be good with butter. Yeah. Or honey. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That'd I be have really only nice. met one honey that I liked in my entire life. One honey? Yep. All the what honeys I've had were just bleh. Oh, I love honey. Me I know. Too. Everybody does. But that, that one jar of honey that I had in my shelf for like three years, I finally opened it like right before I left. I was like, oh my gosh, this is delicious. <laughs> yeah, cool. well, I mean, you have to get like real honey. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. real honey, but it's oh, still, okay. I don't like the, it's like too sweet. I don't know. It's a lot of things. But this was a local honey, which I've also had before, but it was just kind of like a little more craggly on the texture. And you don't have better. to eat honey straight, though. You can put it on things. Yeah, yes. that's key. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. Wish. Well, it's not a question that I have to ask. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, we are using a different Argus cam today, as uh, our usual camera is uh, down at the moment.
Bridge nav, two zero meters, zero seven five. So here, I think that might be stolen a friends, overgrowing a dead skeleton. We can have a look. Yeah, let's see. Okay, go ahead. Yep, yep, those look like octocorals. Cool. That is a stoloniferous octocoral. So that's not its own skeleton? That's overgrowing another skeleton? It's overgrowing another skeleton. Uh, the stoloniferans don't create their own skeleton. So they are always overgrowing on new substrates. So either on rocks or on other... Um, old skeletons of corals or sponges. Ruthless. They don't seem to do it on live coral. They only do it on, on dead stuff. So they, oh, they're nice. very opportunistic on their substrates. Um, unlike the parazoanthids that seem to only grow on live stuff, um, especially that, that yellow one that grows on the paragorge, yeah. That one always seems to grow sort of in concert with the live coral. We got some bamboo coral. Well, this one's kind of sparsely branching. Can we get a nice tight zoom on this one, please? Yeah. I think it might be branching internodally. Oh, there's is there two of them. Or is this a branch that's coming down? Now I have seen some bamboo corals that have like sent down arms and, and attached them to the rock. Really? In addition to the base, yeah. That looks internodal to me. Yep, yep, I think you're right. Very internodal. Untrained. Internodal sparse brancher. I always think it's fun that the, the mouths of the polyps on these bamboos are sort of orangey red color. Not sure why that is, but it is pretty fun. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's a little crinoid. A little tiny crinoid. Yeah, and they seem to attach like where the uh, tissue has receded a little bit. And I'm not sure. Did if they cause it or did that, that was where they landed? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, like, it looks kind of like it caused it, but, yeah, there's no way to know. Yeah, it's the only tissue gap we saw on that whole thing, I think. Exactly. That's why I'm thinking maybe the crinoid landed and the tissue receded. Sometimes some animals don't like to share, and sometimes animals do share and, and coexist with the coral very peacefully. It could be like a tree trunk that grow. You know, you tie a rope around a tree, and then the tree trunk will kind of grow around it. Yeah, yeah, that might have happened. Here's another one of those big polyopagon sponges. Ooh, what a big one. It keeps going.
They're very photogenic sponges. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of looks like a like a mitt, or like you could have it as a one of those uh, modern chairs. Polyopagon bean bag. I'd be down. I think that would sell. <laughs> I have a visual of the album cover. I don't. I don't know, it might ruin it. <laughs> it was, I kind of picture something very much like printed off. Yeah, well, it's actually much nicer than I thought it would be. Sorry, SPL. It's cool. Forgive you. Also, yesterday I found a friend, um, my material science friend, who oh, yeah. uh, was, I was asking them what energy, what was the type of energy you oh, needed yeah. to make uh, crystals at the surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is called surface energy. <laughs> surface energy. Yeah, for crystals so at the surface. Um, surface energy quantifies the disruption of intermolecular bonds that occurs when a surface is created. So um, wow. surfaces must be intrinsically less energetically favorable than the bulk material. Um, and so surface energy can be defined as the excess energy of the surface of a material compared to the bulk, or it cool. is the work required to build an area of a particular surface. Wild. Yeah. Surface energy. It, and um, surface energy is for solids, what surface tension is for liquids. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. That, that makes, makes total sense. sense. That sounds like one of those um, questions you get on, like, the SAT. Like <laughs> yeah, except not. By the time I took the SAT, they'd gotten rid of them. After oh, all really? That yeah. <laughs> all the what? All the what? Like, uh, sausage is to bacon as pigs are to what? Actually, that was a really good one. I think those questions are still on the GRE, though. Are they? Man. It's like, it'll give you a sentence, and it'll underline two words, and then it'll be like, what word, like, best goes in there? And it'll be like, they'll underline the word, like, good or something, and then it'll be like, great, like, better. Like, it's like the words are all the same, and you have to use, like, this. It's so stupid. It's a little That's different, why. but also awful. Yeah. yeah, I don't see how that tests. Your, your knowledge and ability to accomplish grad school in any way. Uh, Unless some, you're an English major, maybe. And who even just then, needs to do comparisons. Yeah, that doesn't even. Even then, like, that, you're not going to do that many comparisons, I feel like, in an English, like, master's no. or PhD. Well, maybe. Yeah. But uh, some undergrad colleges are getting rid of uh, SAT requirements. That's They're good. not even looking at it anymore. Thank goodness. Yeah, those standardized tests are quite silly. And a lot of people were discouraged for in, uh, continuing their education, thinking they're not smart enough when they absolutely are. Yeah. It's just, they're just not good at standardized tests. What does SAT stand for? For the Canadian here? Standardized something test. <laughs> nope, nope. Just going to look it up. Not Scholastic even going to try. Scholastic aptitude test. Yeah. There you go. Let's go this um, way. There's also the ACT. That is a great rock. That yep. a lot of colleges uh, can take. And it's actually interesting because there's studies that show um, that people of color and women do better on the ACT and um, more men and uh, like white people and so especially like white men do better on the SAT. What's ACT? ACT is another standardized test. Um, oh, that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Because the SAT, uh, you start with a score before you even take it. So if you don't answer any of the questions, you'll get a score. But you also lose points for every wrong answer you get. Whereas at ACT, they don't uh, count points against you. They just count points for you. How do you 
to start with a score. Oh, I understand. Everyone yeah, so starts it starts at, at like 200 or something. And then every, so it's like if you get every question wrong, you lose, you get a zero. Roger. But if you don't answer any questions, you get a 200. Hmm. Huh. Well, I guess that means that, you know, AC you're, ta you're taking more time to find the right answer than just like guessing answers. Because yeah. like, if you randomly guess a bunch of answers, you statistically will get at least a quarter of the answers correct. Uh, but if you get punished for wrong answers, then that that would lower your score if you're guessing. Yeah. ACT stands for American College Testing, undergraduate admissions mostly in the U.S. and Canadian universities or colleges. Yeah, so this way they score is different. The ACT is out of 36, or at least it was when I took it. And uh, the SAT when I took it was out of 2,400, but then they changed it a couple years after I took it. They so changed it again? They changed the SAT again. Oh, my gosh. So, like, I don't know. I think it's out of... 1800 now what yeah okay uh, why'd they put it back to, never mind yeah, uh, it was down lower <laughs> and then they put yeah. it up and now they're back down yeah i it's so um these tests are so arbitrary if you don't do good on a test that doesn't mean anything there's you so might, many you might be kind of sick that day there's so many factors that can go into bad test score it's so annoying that we use them and we make people feel bad for yeah not doing well on them. Well, and the test takes so long. Like, how do you sit still and focus on a test for hours? Yeah, oh, I and have then a... if, like people who have accommodations have to take the test for the whole day. Yep, I had a friend who was, uh, I don't know um, what exactly his deal was, but he was neurodivergent. And, um, you know, we had taken, I, I don't think it was the SAT, I think it was like the, like, ITED or like one of those other like little standardized tests uh, mid high school um, and he was just like walking around in like the main building I was like hey are you, did you take your test and he's like I'm, I'm taking come it up actively fast. <laughs> just taking a break um bio question wasn't paying attention there are there deep sea is it bryozoans Yes, they are deep sea bryozoans. Bryozoans. I never know. Yes, we might actually see some. Um, they can look very we'll coral like. Okay. Um, some of the colonies can get a decent size. They tend to it's be smaller than our, our, our you know, you average uh, coral sorry. colony, but we've seen some pretty good sized ones uh, on past dives. We also will see them on some of our rock samples that we collect. Even if we Hello, didn't wall. see them in the camera, um, we, we have collected some bryozoans. So, yeah, yeah, there are deep sea bryozoans. This looks like a fun rock to climb. Oh, yeah. If you're really into bouldering. Speaking of bouldering, Coralie, eh? <laughs> this question. I'm just going to read the whole question and you can. Take the interpretation as you will. Okay. It seems like on these overhanging area, these overhanging areas have much more jagged rocks with very little crusting. Does that mean that there's a level of current flow Pretty that cool. is actually detrimental to crust formation? Yeah. You're um, right. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, Bridge and Ave, two I zero meters zero seven five. I think these actually might be pretty crust heavy that instead of crust weak. Fantastic uh, rock. Well, I don't know what the words they used, but not that much crust, like crusting. Detrimental to crust formation. Um, I mean, are you, do you guys like this rock? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, pretty I great. Like this rock. <laughs> it's pretty great. I, it yeah, would I don't think be enough for me to just talk about this rock. Yeah, I don't think the overhanging has anything to do um, with not it not being crusted. I think kind of the opposite might be true that the overhanging kind of shows that there's like more crust formation. Possibly. We will not know, though, until... You wouldn't know until you break it open, though. Like Probably this. know it could be, you know, that mud stuff. It could be another peanut butter rock. Peanut butter cup rock. Megan, are you going to have uh, Trader Joe's dark chocolate peanut butter cups waiting for you at home? Did your oh, mom yeah. score some? Yeah, my mom's definitely going to go to Trader Joe's and pick some of those up for me. Nice. 
Oh, I have peanut butter good. cups. Oh, you should have brought them. <laughs> okay, I'll bring them. I'll bring them next watch or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that would have been so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I brought them. I just woke up so so late and ran up here. <laughs> yeah, I had a hard time waking up. Oh, oh my God, I had such a hard time waking up. I set my alarm for three thirty nine a.m. and then I like woke up. And I was like, oh, I don't want to wake up now. So then I like put on a timer for two minutes and went back to sleep. <laughs> Follow-up question, 3.39? Yeah. Precisely? Like, what? Yeah. Well, why not 3.40? What's, what's the story behind the 3.49? Um, I don't know. I feel like if I, I feel like if I <laughs> make it a little bit earlier, then I have like two extra minutes, which could be useful to me. Um, like, in the getting ready or something. Also, everyone in the world probably sets their alarm at, you know, right at specific intervals, like at 10s or 5s. So, like, by having it not at a 10 or a 5, I'm waking up kind of in a unique way. You just want to be unique. <laughs> Separate yourself from the My pack. phone auto snaps to the 5s. I hate it. Oh, this is a really cool rock. This yeah. is a really cool rock. There is so much coral up here. All right, I think I, I have a few things to identify here. Do you want to stop the ship? Um, We can keep moving. Okay, zoom in here. Is this the one you wanted to look at? Yeah, I, it Go looked ahead. really kind of fuzzy, um, but it is a Pernoa coral. This looks like Paracalyptrophora. Look at all of those. Yeah, they're eyes just finishing on it. a move. I'm just going to let that it finish. That is the coral everybody likes, apparently. Um, this is a Pernoa coral, and it's covered with. Um, brittle stars, and I saw a shrimp in there. We've got a bunch of bamboo. We've got some parazoanthids, those sort of yellow ones. Um, got some Chrysogorgia. We got some sort of brambly looking bamboos. We've got some Norella, uh, Primnoa corals, more of those Pleurogorgia. These look like parazoanthids or zoanthids, some leafy sponges, possibly Atlanticella, got some base sponges, Regadrella. Looks like, oh, look we at got this one. wispy one. Yeah, this is um, that really uh, big uh, Rodana ritogorgia. We took a sample of this, I think, on our first dive. Is that a lot of little mushroom corals? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Aww. Zoom into the mushroom field, please. The mushroom field. Mushroom. Love it. Ooh. So many little mushrooms. Wow. Aww. You don't usually see them grouped together like this, do you? Not that often. Uh, there was a uh, dive, um, I think this was on Mozart Seamount, uh, that had a ton okay, come of please. these little mushroom corals all grouped together on the side of a rock similar to this. This is a par this is a really large paragorgia. It's huge. All right, I'm going to run out of leash any second now. You sure you don't want to back the ship up to see this rock some more? Do you want to oh, back the I, ship? Oh, I I would love to hang out and see this rock. This is great. Oh, um, okay. Well, yeah, let's do well, that. Then then. Let's do that. Yeah, okay. Um, so, 20 meters, 30 meters? What, what do you think? You uh, if we want to go to the far side, we probably should have 30. Yeah, let's do 30. Okay, cool. Well, I'll check out this close side to start. Got some love for the uh, offbeat alarm time. Somebody gets up at uh, 4.03. Bridge huh? Jeff. I said we've got some love for the... Uh, Offbeat alarm. We're gonna times. back the shit up yeah. ship up. Um, can we have a three zero meter move two five zero? Yeah. Uh yep, correct. Two five zero three zero meters.
So what else are you seeing, Megan? Oh, yeah, um, lots of coral. This is a nice high density community. Um, they love this rock. Apparently this rock is where it's at. Can I have some delta, please? This rock kind of protrudes out more so than the rest of the seamount. Do you think that probably has something to do with why there's so many corals? Like maybe it's easier to get nutrients there or something? She's, she's typing into the science chat. Dr. Hilly was saying how they like the highest points. So maybe that's, that is why. Yeah, they do, they do like these high points because these are areas of current acceleration. But sometimes you find like cliff faces and high points where you think you'd see a lot of coral and there aren't hardly any. And here we, we're seeing such a really nice diversity of different things. So um, a bunch of different sponges, a lot of different corals. It doesn't look like there's any one thing that's really dominating the community. This is a nice polyopagon sponge. So these are glass sponges. They're in the Amphidiscosida. Uh, no, can't do it. And this could be a polyopagon B, or what we've been describing as polyopagon B. It has sort of a rounded backside and like a concave surface. We've just been giving them letters sort of to describe uh, morphologies that, that look a little bit different from each other, just mm. in case they are different. This is the smaller of the two rocks. This is a question Can that we, we get. Oh, go ahead. Check out this little, little coral stick. stalk. Yeah, a little stick. Uh, let's not check out that stick. Let's come up. Okay. Let's yeah, we don't want to wanna hurt any of these really beautiful corals, so definitely want to... Sometimes it's easier I just to scared. survey. See what's here. I'm going to make Argus' sonar shorter. Uh, closer. Yeah, I got 10 meters per ring now. Just for now. There's also a lot of these uh, Chrysogorgia corals. They're sort of bottle brush like, but not full bottle brushes. They have some side branches. A few different types of bamboo coral, for sure. This is a question that we get a lot on our exploration so far. What has surprised us the most? I mean, this, we're exploring things that have never been explored, so everything's a surprise, right? I mean, like, we have no idea what we're expecting to see down here. Yeah, um, this is this little rock was a little bit of a surprise. Feel free to point out more sticks or whatever you want to zoom in on now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, some of these Chrysogorgias are really, really large. Here's a Faria sponge. Those ones are pretty fun. I think I saw a Walteria on the other side. So this rock. This is a really neat rock. Oh, yep. Here's a tree to Plura. There is a Faria near Oka. There's just a regular Faria. Not regular. It's it's the turbocharger one that doesn't look like a turbocharger. <laughs> it hasn't been described yet, but that is in the process of being described. We have some of these um, really fan-like uh, Chrysogorgias. Those are pretty cool. See a Bathopathies, some Regadrella. This one looks like it might be Candidella Gigantia. Have we seen those this dive? 
I think we've seen them, but I don't know if we've zoomed to confirm. Okay. A nice zoom might be good. Yeah, we can get a zoom on the Gigantia. This wee little Gigantia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're hard to tell from the uh, the branch unbranched bamboos. They have a very okay, similar zoom color. In So you see a whirl of three polyps, and the polyps have a bunch of body scales. So that's typical of Gigantia. What? And then if it was a bamboo, you'd see those uh, nodes. I was... I think, a, like, a little bit up from here, there was a Calyptrophora. What's this little crescent moon looking thing down at the bottom of the screen? I mean, this this is a cucumber. Is it what? Cucumber. Cucumber. Nice little like harvest. Yeah, you're pointing out some lovely uh, organisms, and I'm very distracted. Like, wow, there's really nice lighting on this rock. <laughs> no, the rock looks great. All right, let's go see if we can find that actual rock, the rock we stopped for again, which was over here. Well, sometimes you stop for a rock, and then there's there's more rocks. rocks along the way. Oh wow! <laughs> it turned around. It's like even more things. Oh this yeah, is, this, this is, is our major little rock, the yeah. major rock with the uh, the little garden patches of mm -hmm. uh, mushroom corals and the Romilogorgia. Got this sponge. Not quite sure what that is. Let's find out. Okay, zoom in on the sponge, please. Okay, so it is a euplectelid sponge, um, and that's all I've got. It is very leafy, and uh, doesn't have a lot of extra structure to it. Um, but then you have like these really nice vase-looking ones. So those are Corbitelliny, and then these sort of bluish looking ones are different, and then these are demo sponges. Those little wee things? Yeah, those little wee ones are demo sponges. Demo. Everything's life here. Yeah, Amazing. and then uh, there were some Stoloniferous octocorals on this, and uh, there, was, there was a branch I was looking at earlier that I thought was really interesting. Can we look at this one? That one looks yep. weird. What's the name of the one that grows on other skeletons? The so you have the um, Stoloniferous octocorals that will grow on uh, things that were dead, and you have the zoanthids that sometimes grow on live stuff. So those are both two examples of corals that like to grow on top of other corals. Okay, zoom in, please. So check out that dramatic lighting. It's beautiful. Yeah, could we? Yeah, so this is definitely a stolen nerfus octocoral. So you can see here where it's growing on the rock. Shot that light. And it's that light. like nice little tissue that's uh, growing yes. over. Could we get a sample of this? Yes, come wide, please. Asako was requesting a uh, a sample of these uh, stolen nerfus octocorals. We grabbed some that were growing on a sponge, and this one's growing on a coral skeleton. Be All right, to see full super extra wide, They're the please. same thing. Yeah, everything I can get here. A lot of times when we see them, they're growing on uh, on the rock itself, which is hard to really collect and preserve. You can't take a whole boulder with you. 
Even though I know some geologists who would definitely want whole boulders. <laughs> and we do have a geology question. But first, before I forget, uh, Megan, right after our watch yesterday, you ran back upstairs to uh, get a sample of something. It's a Yoda what? I could not um, remember. So it is an acorn worm. Um, oh, okay. It's Enteropneusta is the scientific name. And the scientific name of the species we, or the genus that we collected was Yoda. Um, yes, like the Star Wars character. So the, the person who described that genus thought that the head of this um, acorn worm looked like Yoda's head, like same shape, kind of had those long ears. Um, and it had been described from the Atlantic but we had just started seeing them in the Pacific, and uh, I would like I wanted a sample to compare with the, that Atlantic paper. So confirm, we're going for this one here? Uh, zoom in, please. Yeah, let's zoom in to confirm. Yeah, yeah that looks right. OK, come wide, please. And you want just a little micro snip? Yeah, just a snip a branch off. Okay. And then we'll slurp it. That was a that was a question, not a command. One second. Megan, that was for you. Could you repeat the question? Are we gonna slurp this? Um yeah, we could slurp it. You could just snip and slurp. The old snip and slurp. Okay, so two, three, four, five, the cameras, and please? six. Sorry, no. Three through six is open. Two has that gunk in it. You can rotate the jar to whatever I wasn't listening to. Let's do three. Okay, zoom in, please. Okay. Let the pilots do their thing, and then we have a geo question for you in a minute, Coralie. Um, I might want bubble 